passed away. We wanted men. We're good. Welcome to episode 135 of the Smugglers Galaxy podcast, your favorite Star Wars podcast for smugglers in the galaxy. The, well, I did say episode 135, so we're we're good. I don't need to say that again. Uh, I'm Glenn, and Jason is in Florida uh, right now. Oh, no, he's actually in Myrtle Beach, so that's even maybe a little bit better than Florida, uh, except there's no Disney, but he did post pictures of a Disney outlet up there, so that's kind of cool. Uh, hey. So in his absence, we've got Mr. Jordan Duncan, uh, Jordan what? Gasly for all you uh, people on the YouTubes and uh, everything else that he does. Uh, Jordan, how you doing this morning? I'm all right, man. How are you doing? I am good. Uh, kind of, you know, excited. Got my uh, like third or fourth cup of coffee going. You've got some spiked lemonade, you said. I do. I had, <laughs> I woke up, I woke up early and I had to hit the coffee early because I had to do some stuff around the house this morning. Yeah. Uh, and and then it got to be around, I don't know, like 11, 15, 11, 20 or something. And I'm like, I wonder when Glenn wants to record. <laughs> so I, sent, I sent that message to you and I'm like, yo. <laughs> yeah, we had talked yesterday and we we're like about yeah. noon and I'm cooked breakfast and I'm getting, you know, doing like a little bit of housework. So that's why I didn't see it for 20 minutes because I was running the vacuum. At- yeah, yeah, that's uh, I I was I was doing some I was cleaning up around here too. I'm trying to uh get this place uh looking nice. I feel like I've neglected cleaning my house for like the last two weeks. Oh yeah, because I've been busy the last two weekends, <laughs> and I come home and my house just looks like a wreck. That's what we're doing because. You know, last weekend was Toylana. This weekend was the swap mm-hmm. meet. And you start looking and I'm like, I had a show Friday night. Uh, so that messed up my swap meet, but the weather, so it kind of worked out good. The weather kind of pushed everything's back. So, uh, you know, it kind of worked out good for me, but yeah, it's like next weekend's Easter. Then the weekend after that, we've got something going on. And then it just, all of a sudden it piles up and you're like, what am I doing? And my, yeah, my this... wife texted me, uh, she's like, Hey, mulch is on sale at Home Depot. And I'm like, crap, something else. <laughs> This is this is adulthood, Glenn. This is <laughs> this is this is what happens whenever you pass the age of thirty five. You're just perpetually busy with doing random stuff for, yeah. for from from then until I don't know your sixties, your seventies. Who knows? Right. It, yeah, yeah. Until you retire and move into old folks' mm-hmm. home and have mm-hmm. somebody take care of you, then then that's what you're doing. I've already told my wife. I'm like, man, when I hit like seventy, I don't care. Sell the house, put me in a old folks. Uh, apartment complex where i don't have to worry about anything and i'll mm-hmm. be happy mm-hmm. so uh anyway how was uh how was your week it was actually kind of busy um i'm sure we'll we'll, we'll talk about toy lanta uh, yeah we'll get into toy lanta a, a little but, bit but um but as far as my my week post toy lanta it was actually kind of i had to i had to do some stuff for work I, i'm planning an event for work and then i actually had to do a, another program for work that week um and it was so once once uh toylana ended i didn't have time to decompress from toylana i had to just jump right into doing work stuff so and then and then finally uh friday friday of this last week was uh was kind of like the first day even though i still had to work i i um i uh it was an easy day at Uh work so i was able to just kind of hang out also uh my one of my cats is uh rubbing up against my microphone right now so if you guys oh, hear awesome. some some meows or some purrs i've got one of my cats uh snooping around yeah um <clears throat> no i was able to uh, i guess take it easy uh on a friday work day but then yesterday saturday we had the the toy swap in powder springs our bi-monthly toy swap that we typically have yeah. so i was uh I wanted to, I'm, I'm still kind of riding the high from Toylanta. Like I, I still haven't hit the withdrawal portion oh, of, man. Of, of Toylanta yet. So I was looking forward to the toy swap so I could 
just meet up with a handful of the people that we were hanging out with at Toy Lanta. So sorry, my cats mess around. All right. Um, <laughs> So just to kind of, I'm I've been calling it my Toy Lanta hangover, where I'm just right. kind of slowly getting over uh, the 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 Toy Lanta, just to the the hustle and bustle and epicness of Toy Lanta. So, uh, but no, it was it was a fun day yesterday. You know, the weather started out really bad, mm -hmm. and um, it, it by whenever I got there, it was still cloudy and rainy at the toy swap. And uh, the rain lasted for like maybe five minutes. And then awesome. 10 minutes later, the clouds parted and the sun came out and it was great weather for the rest of the day. So it was it was fun hanging out at the toy swap. The weather was nice, although it was a little windy. People were starting to lose their tents and stuff was blowing off of tables, which is unfortunate. Um, but yeah. I guess them's the breaks. You can't you can't uh, you can't combat Mother Nature if you're having an outside event. No, and we were I was at a booth. And, uh, you know, you, the wind comes and you just kind of grab onto the tent and the guy's like, I, I got it. We're good. I'm like, dude, it's a force of habit hanging out here, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and mm -hmm. you start looking for stuff falling. Um, but yeah, no, we got there about noon, uh, cause I had a show Friday night. I didn't get it home till about two 30. So, uh, we just, it was a lazy Saturday and about, but nine 30, 10 o'clock, you're looking at your watch going, we need to start moving if we're going to get there anytime soon. And, uh, when we showed up at noon, it was a rockin'. I was really surprised to see that amount of people there at that late. I think a lot of, I think there were, there was a combination of two things. I, I think there were a lot of people who were coming out post Toy Lanta, like a lot of people who went to the, to the Toy Lanta show. Mm -hmm. And then I think there were also a lot of people who didn't want to pay to go to a convention. Right. We're kind of getting their toy fix. So they were, you know, who, were probably hyped up from all the the post Toy Lanta buzz, and they were just kind of itching to go to a toy show. So, um, there were also a handful of different vendors this time I noticed around. That so I was actually really happy to see the variety. Not that I'm ha not happy to see uh, familiar faces and, and whatnot, but it's always nice to see new vendors come in because I always think it it, it uh, the variety of stuff at those toy swaps. Because it, it's it's a free show. You can just show up. Right. I mean, if you're a vendor, you have to pay for a vendor table space. But but I always think it's really cool whenever um, new new vendors uh, and dealers show up because uh, I feel like it adds to the variety. Right, and it's it's like minimal. It's like ten bucks to show up. Yeah, I think it's the yeah, ten or fifteen bucks for a table is not it's not very expensive at all. So no. so did you, what did you pick anything up? Uh, I did actually. Uh, also, I want to. I want to actually use this time to to give a shout out to the our local toy collecting community and a lot of oh, friends yeah. that I've made through the collecting community. So when when I was with my buddy Richard, uh, who's always in the toy hunt videos, um, and we we were walking around, and I had not planned on buying anything because I again we'll talk about how much I spent at Toyland. <laughs> um yes we'll, but we'll I, get into that in a minute yeah. yeah but i i didn't i didn't plan on buying anything so because of that i didn't bring cash and i know a lot of vendors do zelle and venmo and paypal but i always think for a show like that cash is just the quickest like i'm right. not gonna so um i i neglected or i specifically neglected to uh stop by an atm because i'm like i'm not gonna buy anything and then it wasn't until like maybe an hour or two into the show, my buddy Douglas FaceTimes me and he's like, Hey, where are you? And I'm like, I'm over here. And he looked in my direction. He's like, I see you come, come. Yeah. I'm waving at you. Come, come here real quick. Uh, and he was looking out for me for some Marvel legends stuff. Uh -huh. And um, there was this empty, empty space when I got there. And I guess the dude, showed up a little late and set up after the sun had come out. And this dude had ridiculous deals on tons of really cool Marvel legend stuff. Um, and I picked up, so I, I was looking at his table and I saw that he had uh, this Hulk figure that I've been looking for. It came out about a year ago. It's the Marvel legends, 20th anniversary, uh, incredible Hulk. And it was like a $40 figure when it came out. Mm-hmm. 
Um, it's a little hard to find now. So I think you can still get it for about 50 on, on the secondary market. But um, I asked him how much and he goes, eh, 30 bucks. And I was like, oh man, I kind of want to do this. And he goes, 25. He's like, I'm just trying to get rid of it. 25. And I was like, oh my God. And like, I panicked for a second and I said, I need cash. Does anybody have cash? Because uh-huh. I didn't, I didn't even think to ask him, do you take Venmo or PayPal? But I was like, oh my God, I need cash real quick. Not one, not two, but three friends within two seconds had their wallets out to help me with $25 cash. That's awesome. To find, to get this figure. Cause they all knew it was too good of a deal to pass up. Right. And um, so my buddy Douglas, my buddy Ricky and Richard all like with, again, two seconds had their wallets out. Uh, shout out to Ricky because he already had cash in his hand and and he's like, here you go, man, I got you. And, uh, he just paid the dude for me. And I actually ended up, uh, I already needed to PayPal Ricky from some stuff I picked up from him the day before. Uh So I just tacked on whatever, you know, that $25 to what I, what I owed him. Um, so I just thought it was really cool that, that friends that I've met in the community, were just like Johnny on the spot willing to help me because they all, like I said, I didn't have cash and everyone just without question, just grabbed their wallets. And I thought that that was, that was really cool. And um, I don't know. I just think it kind of shows how willing and supportive the, uh, the community is around here um, for, or in our, in our Jordan, North Georgia area. Uh, Right. So I think, I don't know. It's uh, it's like this, this really cool unspoken brotherhood. And yeah. I think, uh, or sisterhood, you know, I'm not, I'm not here to, I'm not here to, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm not here to discriminate. <laughs> right. Um, but I mean, that's sort of where it, it, yeah. it, it always kind of in the English language, that's kind of where everything goes um, uh-huh. or the proper way to speak. I don't know if things are changing. Right. I'm, I'm, I, yeah. Um, but, personhood. There we go. Person. There you go. Um, um, but anyway, point I'm getting at is I just I thought it was really cool that um, friends I've made in the community were were without question willing to help me like literally at the drop of a hat. Right. And I just thought that was really cool. And that the the toy was fun, but that was kind of the highlight of my day. Was that right. just like people were like, "Oh yeah, I got you. Don't worry about it." Yeah, those swaps. That's what I love about those swaps is it's more hanging out than it is about the toys. Yeah, mm-hmm. you're gonna find some cool stuff, but the half the reason to go is is to hang out and you get mm-hmm. to see some cool stuff. I mean, you may not buy anything, but you know, we hung out for half an hour and you just you always are talking to people and and you know, a lot of the times I, I suck at names and I'll forget who they are, but I'm like, oh yeah, you're the guy that had all the superpower stuff that second chance bought or you know stuff like that. So you, I remember mm-hmm. what they had and what they're into. So. Uh, it's always fun to hang out. Uh, mm-hmm. Is that all you picked I, up? That uh, from yesterday at the toy swap. Yes, that's all. No, no, no. Uh, my buddy Jeremy, who's in the 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 Georgia action figure group, uh-huh. um, he actually had a whole bunch of really cool painted um, mini snake mountains. Like, uh, oh wow! A, a couple, yeah, so a couple years ago, whenever they started to reissue uh, all these Masters of the Universe Origins figures, they did like little blind box toys. Yeah. And the blind boxes were in the shape of Gray Skull or Snake Mountain. And so he he bought a whole bunch of them on clearance and then he started to paint them, and give them detail and he was just selling them for 10 bucks, but you know, I've known Jeremy for we've been friends for over 20 years, so he just like gave one to me. That's awesome. So, which was really cool of him. Um so, uh Jeremy's a really good dude and especially like he's re- he's like super generous when like when it comes to stuff like that too. Mm-hmm. If he knows that you're looking for stuff, he'll be like, "Oh, I got one. You can just have it." That's awesome. So, yeah. Uh so that is, those are the only two things I got from the swap. And I'm trying to remember if I picked up anything after the swap. I don't think so. I think I attempted to go into a Target to uh-huh. see if the new Indiana Jones adventure series figures were out yet. Cause I did see a few of them at the toy swap for cost. Um, huh. There's a really cool vendor. His name's Edwin. Um, and he, his, his booth is always a really cool hodgepodge of like everything. He's got plush. He's got action figures. He's got vintage. He's got coloring books. He's got puzzles. Like it's, 
it really is a, re- a cool hodgepodge of a bunch of stuff. And it just so happened that he had three of the new Indiana Jones action figures for, uh, I, again, like the retail for 25 bucks. And he didn't have the Indy or the tote, which are the two I was looking for. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was like, oh, well, if he found them, then they've got to be hitting the shelf. So I, I hit up a target on the way home, but I didn't see anything. And I, I think I was like, you know what, between the, this weekend and last weekend, I think I'm good. I think I should, uh, I think I should replenish the well and, and right. hit it again in a couple of weeks. So gotcha. I decided to come home after that. Sweet. Yeah. I, um, uh, I was walking around and, and I got to this one table and there was like this little five or six year old, maybe seven, eight, I don't know. A uh, kid was there and he's like, he, there was a round table and he's like, this is my table. Look at it. Look at all the stuff I have for sale, you know, <laughs> being a total little salesman. So uh, he had a little Galactic Heroes uh, ATST. And I'm like, dude, how much you want for that? He goes three dollars, and I'm thinking, I'm in the same boat you're at. I don't have cash, and I don't really want a three dollar Vin, you know, three dollar uh, mm-hmm. send Venmo three dollars or whatever. Um, and then the guy, um, I don't know if you saw the couple of uh, bootleg ceramic R twos that were at Toylana last week. No, I missed those. Well, that was his. It was his dad. That guy had one of the ones. That it was on like this plastic, uh, this big base, uh, like old school. You you know what when you hear the term vomit, uh, art or whatever, it just oh yeah 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 yeah, it, yeah. it's not one of those, but it looks they painted it to look like that, where yeah. it's just like a bunch of crap, random stuff. It's like a mosaic almost, uh, but it's two colors, two or three colors. Uh, and then he had a wampa, so I picked all it because I'm like, how much you want for the 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 R two? And he wanted half of what he had it at Toylana, and then he wanted like ten bucks for the wampa. So I'm like, all right. I can I could PayPal you fifty three dollars for those, so yeah, it was I got, worth it. Yeah, that's all I picked up, and then we went by second chance after the toy swap because they had a a Pete as Boba Fett pin, mm-hmm. and I um I'd pick that up because I have, you know, it's a Disney, it's a Boba Fett. You gotta mm-hmm. kind of mash them together, and I picked up uh I picked up a paint sample or a paint sign off of him as Django Fett. Uh, it just came in. So I got that from China in like two weeks. Oh, nice. Yeah. So that was kind of cool. And I was messaging the seller going, dude, what's going on? Where's it at? And I think what he did was shipped it to somewhere in California and then they relabeled it and shipped it to me. So mm. I, I don't know. People do crazy stuff like that for mm. shipping stuff around, you know. Didn't um, didn't Mandy pick up a whole bunch of mini Ewoks? She did. Yeah. Well, Ewok she, figures. Yeah, she picked up some play school Ewoks and then a couple of the Spanish Ewoks. And then the play school Ewoks, she was comparing to some of the ones she has, and they're different colors. Like the cloaks are different colors. Oh, that's cool. So she's got more, uh, you know, variants of them. Nice. And uh, we were at Second Chance, and uh, we she broke them out, and they were looking at them, and they were like, you got a deal, because I think one of them was worth what she paid for the whole lot. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And that's I think that that's... That's the beauty of those toy shows because you, sometimes you pass a booth. Like, I guess it's one thing when you go and you see a lot of modern stuff still in the box. And I say modern, like stuff within the last, let's say 10 years. Yeah. Still, still in the box or still on the card and people are trying to get a decent amount for them. Um, but then you, you've got like the vendors that just have random stuff. They just have bins of old stuff. And when you dig around in them, and I, I hesitate to use the phrase, they don't know what they have. They probably know what they have, mm-hmm. um, but they're also just, like, to them, it's just stuff that they're trying to unload, right? So right. That, you, yeah. get, you get lucky, if, uh, crate digging, so to speak. Yeah, that's what uh, Jason was going to put some stuff out at Toylana, and he was comparing uh, to other stuff, but he's like, oh, I'm going to price it low because I want to get rid of it. I don't mm-hmm. care if I make money. There was a new, uh, a new table, or at least new to me. That I, I I can't confirm whether or not they had set up uh, before or not, but they were down the main, the main pathway, and they were the first, uh, closest to the to the antique mall. Uh huh. On the left, they had a whole bunch of bagged Marvel Legends, but they also had a whole bunch of bagged vintage stuff too. They had a bunch of bagged Shira figures. Uh, they had, um, I feel like I want to say they had a, a Shira castle, like oh, the wow. castle playset. 
Uh, they had a whole bunch of 80s plush. They, there were a couple popples in there that were in really good condition. And uh, I feel like we've mentioned a bunch of stuff that's not Star Wars on the Star Wars podcast. Dude, but, it's all good. But, but um, they I, they had some really cool stuff. And I, I thought uh, uh, they had uh, they actually had this really interesting Ziploc bag of like these tiny little like the static figures. They're just in one pose of the 1980s filmation Ghostbusters. Oh, wow. And I don't see a lot of filmation Ghostbusters stuff mm-hmm. uh, on the secondary market. And when I do, it's usually really expensive. Right. Like I saw I saw a couple of figures at Toylanta still on the card, and the guy was wanting like 250 to 300 for each one. Wow. Yeah. yeah I, it's crazy. Yeah. The one thing I kind of wanted to pick up at Toy Atlanta was uh, a couple of carded GoBots, but they were wanting like 150 for them. And oh, we must have gone to the same booth then. Yeah. Be- because there were a couple of carded GoBots that I was looking. I was looking at the uh, black and green Psykill. That one was awesome. Yeah, dude wanted 120 for it, and let me tell I- you, for a for a brief moment, I thought because I used to have that one too. I had the original one, the red and blue and yellow one. Right. And I also had that one. And I, for a, for a, a minute, I was like, Hmm, Hmm, I can yeah. do it. I, cause I had the money on me, but I decided not to. Yeah. That would, yeah. uh, that would ate up all my, uh, all my mythic legions money. It, true. <laughs> that's, that's three mythic legions figures. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, that mythic, uh, we'll get to that in a minute, but yeah, I just, mm-hmm. the mythic legion was just a do- totally different budget that was not even a budget it's mm-hmm. like you know that was just like i'm gonna spend money on this because they're cool mm-hmm. uh, but yeah i uh but I, well the thing that also held me back from buying that is there was a toy show in gwinnett a few, uh, about a year ago and mm-hmm. they had a full size cycle one of the 12 inch cycles for the same price so that's why i didn't jump on it not I... yeah i actually did see one of those at toy lana too for roughly about the same price yeah it was uh it was in one of the the side rooms from the uh-huh. main room not the not the one with the kenner guys but the small small one right okay. next to it damn i gotta start paying more attention to this stuff oh i did buddy uh, i did probably 10 passes in each room on mm. saturday at toy Lana. i was i was trying to film but i was also mm. trying to shop at the same uh-huh. time so it was I, I let's just say I got my steps in that day for sure. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Toy Lana's it 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 is. It's just you got to make make a bunch of passes, and I I'm one of those guys where I kind of glance over everything, and I never mm-hmm. really look in the nooks and crannies because that's what Mandy's Mandy's my nook and cranny girl. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, I just totally missed that psycho. It'd have mm-hmm. been cool to see another one. But uh, how was your Toy Lana? Dude, Toy Lana was fantastic. Um, I. Man, I don't even know where to begin. <laughs> I, I first I was I was very fortunate this year that I would I had applied for a press pass. Uh huh. So this is this is actually a funny story. I didn't mean to apply for a press pass for Toy Lanta. I actually emailed the guy. Uh, his name's Ricky. Right. Uh, for a press pass for Joe Lanta back in September. And I didn't hear anything back because I emailed him like two weeks before or a week before or something like that. And I didn't hear anything from him. And then Joe Lanta came and went and I was like, oh, well, I guess you know, no harm, no foul. I'm probably too small time. As I have, you know, as far as like YouTube goes, I have uh, less than a thousand subscribers and uh, I, I'm not monetized. So I'm I'm very very small potatoes on on youtube um but every once in a while i'll get lucky uh and somebody be like yeah we'll hook you up with a press pass so anyway joe lanta came and went and i didn't think anything of it and then a few days after joe lanta uh ricky from toy lanta got in touch with me and said uh hey um you know what you know as far as press passes go like what like what do you do do you have a youtube page do you have a blog yeah and i was like oh yeah i do this youtube page and i I actually sent him my video from Toy Lanta of last year, mm-hmm. which as, as far as high performing videos that I have, like that's one of the highest performing videos. It has like 
almost 2000 views, which again is good for me. Like right. I, I realize on the, the broader scheme of YouTube in general, like that's small potatoes, but for me, that's pretty good. Right. Um, and he emailed back like almost instantly and said, Oh yeah, I've seen your video. Yeah, dude, I can put you on the, the list for a press pass that gets you into the preview night. And it'll get you into the panels and it'll get you into the costume con or, you know, like whatever, like all the extra stuff. And I was like, oh, sweet. And um, I just, I don't know. I was very grateful that he, he saw the video and was like, oh yeah, dude, we, we can, we can make that happen. So I wanted to make the best video because the, like the, he didn't have to give me a full weekend, pa like a press pass. Right. And that, that would have been, you know, that was a $50 pass that he could have sold. Um, so I wanted to make as good a video as I could for him. Uh, and then the video, like normally my, my toy hunt videos end up being like 30 to 40 minutes long at most. This was almost a two hour video <laughs> of the entire yeah. weekend. <laughs> I and watched it. It's, it's a long video. So yeah, it is. It is. And I'm sorry I did that to people. <laughs> I, like As I was <laughs> editing it, as I was editing it, I was like, man, maybe I should break this up into three, three, uh, days. And I was like, nah, screw it. Just one, just one day. Right. So, well, you know, uh, you can you can fast forward and stuff on it, so you can kind of go, okay, oh, I want to see that, or oh, yeah, let's go, you know. So, um, so, um, Toyland itself was was fantastic. We, uh, Richard and I, got there pretty early, and you were one of the first people we saw because <laughs> you just come <laughs> true. We were, I was actually started to record the intro to the day, the preview night. And you just come driving and barreling through and you're like, can I be in your video? <laughs> Which was awesome. Yeah, I loved it so much. I loved that. It was stuff. great because I was watching the video and I'm like showing it to Mandy. I'm like, watch, watch, watch. And you could see me pull up and <laughs> everything. Oh, like and up like, the driveway and stuff. Not only that, but it, it's almost like it was meant to be because when you hit the brakes, you were perfectly in between me and Richard <laughs> <laughs> looking dead set at the camera. Um, but no, so we got there, you know, we bumped into you and Jason, Jason and we just, we got our badges and then we realized that it was going to be another two and a half, three hours until, until showtime. So we were just kind of hanging around, walking mm. around, hanging around. Um. And then, of course, the the hit of the, you know, elephant in the room, the the big hit of the show was the fact that four horsemen, oh my god, yeah, were, were there. So four horsemen who do the toy line, mythic legions, and the upcoming cosmic legions, they've also been had been hands on with a lot of other. Like I know that a lot of their um, sculptors and artists get hired out for other other companies. Like I feel like Super Seven has hired them to sculpt some stuff, mm -hmm. and. Um, I feel like Mezco has hired them to sculpt some stuff as well. Uh, there's a handful of other things, but the, the four horsemen used to way back in the late nineties, if I'm not mistaken, used to work for Todd McFarlane wow. back whenever in the late nineties, when spawn was really big mm -hmm. and uh, those uh, the McFarlane toys were, were super popular. Um, I can believe that I think when you put the two and two together, mm -hmm. it, it they definitely have some similarities. So I know that they, the, like, so the four guys that make up that started four horsemen broke off from McFarlane in the late nineties, early two thousands. And I feel like their first gig was with Mattel whenever the first Harry Potter film came out. And they, I think they were the guys that made the first Harry Potter action figures. Oh, wow. Um, but in 2002, they were the ones that did all of the, um, all of the Masters of the Universe 2000X uh, figures from uh -huh. whenever they rebooted Masters of the Universe in 02 with the Cartoon Network show. Mm -hmm. And then throughout like the, the decades, they kind of worked on some Masters of the Universe stuff here and there. But around, I think it was like 2014, 2015, they decided to do their own thing with this myth Mythic Legions thing. Okay. And it's... I didn't find out about Mythic Legions until like maybe a few years ago. And at the time, my my collecting philosophy was like, oh, no, those are too expensive. I can't do that. And then I ended up acquiring one mm -hmm. somehow. I can't remember how. But then I realized how great a quality or I saw how great the quality of figure it was. I was like, oh, no, this is going to be bad for me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I've I've 
I've picked up a few here and there. And um, but now I've I've I have so many. I have so many of these figures now. And uh, I actually got you to buy to, to uh Yeah. To, to up, buy a handful. Right. I picked up five and then I pre-ordered three of the Cosmic Legions. So yeah, here we here we go. <laughs> so I guess um to, to to not to not um alienate the Star Wars fan base. You know, like what what do you collect when you're not collecting Star Wars? right like right so if if because I, I know your collection you you collect boba fets but also like you're not doing black series anymore like you're I doing still, I, I still buy the boba fett black series when it's feasible but you know uh you know crap when i find them on clearance let's put it that way right i'll buy them because i mean but, like i'm i mean i know everybody has their favorite character but even if, when you have your favorite character how many how many of your favorite character do you really need exactly right so um you know if 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 star wars collecting not in the broad sense but you know in a personal sense like if you have just about everything that you're looking for and you're what you're looking for is becoming more and more niche what do you what else do you collect like i know i know that you collect the bill and ted stuff because you have all those really cool test shots and the this first shots and whatnot but like you and uh, you almost have all of those so it's I, like what what do you start collecting when the stuff you collected is already collected <laughs> exactly it, <laughs> so, it is and, and that's where i'm at and and that's sort of what happened with the mythic legions is, is you find them and well you see them and, and the whole thing that started with me is you found the the cowardice right is that the Kuaros, the one yeah the which what's it called kawaros of course i see i don't know what i'm like the one that looks like that that Battle cat. battle cat yeah. yeah see i can't even think of battle cat right now uh but i saw that one about a year ago somebody had posted and i'm like that's a badass looking figure and then um saturday morning you were like look, look who they had i'm like oh my god and i'm like robert are you buying that one he's like nope i said here's my credit card yeah <laughs> um well do you remember when we went to joe fest yeah. last year so one, I ended up trading a figure with uh, somebody there, and one of the figures that I got was the uh, the Mythic Legions. It was the the Panthor tribute figure. His name is Purplor, but um, so I got one of those went like last year when a year ago when we went to Joe Fest in Augusta. Right. So I was I was trying to expand on some of those Motu tribute figures because like you know like they they worked on a bunch of Motu stuff, but they can't legally call it masters of the universe right so they they do these tribute and homage figures and they fit them into the mythic legions canon and then they'll they'll do nice little nods so and the the kawaros was the the battle cat which is it just looks so good it oh, looks so cool that it's an amazing figure and then it just sort of opened the floodgates for me and i'm like if i got one because i had looked and i was really trying to buy one or two and nothing really you know, you kind of first look, you're like, eh, I don't really see anything, so I'm not going to buy it. But then when I got that one, it, the floodgates just kind of opened. I'm mm -hmm. like, oh, shoot, look at these vampires. Those are badass. And I picked up a couple of those. And Because uh, you bought, so you got the, you ended up getting the Kawaros, which was the Battle Cat tribute. Yep. You got the Lord Dragul, which is the Hordak tribute. Yep. And then you got, didn't you just get one of the random skeletons? Yeah, I got the the neon green skeleton. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think that one's named Scaphoid. Yeah. I, I picked that one up too. Yeah. And I got the guy with the bull head, the red guy with the bull, like he had an orc head and a bull head. Oh yeah. 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 And then I picked up another, um, vampire, the one that had like the lady on his armor. Okay. I've got that one too. That's a uh, Baron Volagar. Yeah. He just sounds badass. He does. And he looks awesome. Um, so let me ask you a question before yeah. we before we continue on with um with the the rest of Toyland to talk. When you picked up your first Mythic Legions figure, and then we all ended up taking a break at the uh like the restaurant, the hotel restaurant, uh -huh. and you started to open them up. What was your first impression on the quality of those figures? They were outstanding. Uh. I'm looking at them from a from a black series collector going why can't you know because we're we're, we're buying them at 40 bucks a piece from 
four horsemen, mm-hmm. which is not what they're going. I mean, even at fifty dollars from a retailer, it's still a good deal. Uh, but yeah, the quality of those things that to me it felt more like the Bandai stuff that was that you know like the Bandai Boba Fett. That's a hundred dollar figure, mm-hmm. and that's where the quality was. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, in truthful, you know, in my mind, I'm like this really should be double the price mm-hmm. uh, because you're getting the heads. I mean, the the cowardice had two extra heads and it had a neck piece. It had extra hands. Uh, you know, all the, the skeleton had another head. The, the Hordak figure had two heads on it. And I wasn't going to buy the Hordak cause I'm like, I got to stop. And then Tony Johnson goes, look at the extra head it came with. I'm like, God damn it. I'm guessing I'm going looks, by that it one. Doesn't look pretty, it doesn't look pretty cool. Yeah. And then I'm kind of kicking myself for not buying the Tila figure because I had it in my hand. I'm like, this is cool looking. And then I just didn't buy her. And then you see her later on, people are selling them for like a hundred bucks. And it's at that point, you're like, damn it, that was a good value. I should have mm-hmm. bought her. And I guess I'm learning, you know, that if you think about it, you need to just go ahead and buy it. Right. Uh, Especially if if you're buying it directly from the four horsemen, because when you, when they go to their shows, like they're selling all of their stuff for their cost. So like $40 for their, you know, your standard figure, 50 for a deluxe. And then, you know, if they have like some of the larger figures, they can range between like 60 to 80, but, right. uh, you know, you're, you're getting that solid quality. I ended up, I ended I'll, I'll, I'll go through what I ended up, what I ended up buying, but, uh, what, uh, one of the ones that I did get real quick is one of the, the larger half giant figures. That's mm-hmm. a Cyclops. And I opened him last night and man, he's, God, he's so cool. <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. The quality is just so good there. I mean, it's number one, you know, it's outstanding quality and they hold their, they hold their poses. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's going to make me a better poser because like the, the black series stuff, you know, oh, I'm going to pu- stand him and, oh, let me turn him at the, you know, turn the waist a little bit so that he's not facing straight on. But right. these Mythic Legions, man, you could do crazy stuff posing them. They actually, it's... you know, bend and hold and stand very well. Right. So, and 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 I've said it on this very, this here show, this here, this very <laughs> show right here, many times. I, even the last time you had me on and I was talking about Black Series, and I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to like go down the harping on Black Series road again but one of my main arguments has always been there's no reason that um black series for a 25 dollar price point figure should not have double elbow joints and double knee joints across the board i know some figures have them and some figures don't um and uh so i'm I've, i've been very vocal about that however the mythic legions don't have double elbow or double um knee and i get far more posability out of those than i do any black series so you know obviously it's it, it's a case by case basis for for articulation but the the way that the mythic legions figures are articulated mm-hmm. or, or designed to be articulated those those suckers hold some really solid you can get them in some really dynamic poses and i would hope so for the higher price point right like right. it's you know and i say higher price point i was because i was also talking with uh another one of the uh the youtube guys his name's greg cook super nice guy all right um he and i were chatting and he's like you know whenever the deluxe star wars figures come out they're now at a 35 dollar price point yep five dollars more i can have a mythic legions figure and it's heftier plastic it's a better quality figure it has better mobility so it's at at this point it's it's a no like yeah it's not a star wars figure it's a mythic legions figure but man just the quality of figure and and i'm not saying that everybody should stop collecting black series that's not what i'm saying i'm not saying right. you should collect black series in lieu of collecting mythic legions that's not what i'm saying um and i realize that like i'm comparing apples to oranges on this but i guess price point wise hasbro is here with a deluxe figure and four horsemen is here with a standard figure and there's only a five dollar difference yeah and the quality the difference in quality is astronomical now mm-hmm. 
you know, I'm sure there's arguments to be made of like, well, Mythic Legions is its own franchise, so you don't have to pay, or its own IP, so you don't have to pay um, a licensing fee, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But still, even, even with that, you get so much more figure for a difference of only five dollars. It's right. bonkers how much more figure you get. I mean, even if you're gonna buy buy it on the secondary market and you're paying fifty dollars from like I know Toy Department sells them because they posted that they had the uh, All Star figures come in and they were at fifty dollars. You know, mm -hmm. it's forty dollars from Mythic Legions, fifty dollars from Toy Department. Uh, I'd be more than happy to pay the fifty dollars versus the forty for a star for a Black Series or thirty five or whatever. You know, we were, I mean, we're, you know, you're now, you went from $5 to $15 and it's still a better value. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In my no, opinion. I'm, I'm with you. No, no, I'm, I'm with you. Um, because like the, that... the, I don't, I'm, I'm sorry, but like the Luke and the Grogu that just came out uh, from the training thing. Yeah. 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 yeah that's yeah. a $45 pack. And it's like, it's to me, where's the value in that? That's a, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm right there with you because. First off, how many times have we gotten a Grogu? Right. Like, there's there's been three Mando and Grogu two packs, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. There's been one standard Black Series Grogu when he was in the tiny little uh, the black box. Right. And then he just had another release Black Series wise where he comes with the pram. Yeah. And and if I'm not mistaken, and I I can't confirm this because I've not I've not had it in hand, but I think it's just a repack of one of the two pack Grogu's with the Pram. I it so, wouldn't surprise me. So we you know you're getting you're getting a figure we've had multiple times with with this. Maybe it's a newish Luke Skywalker. I'm not. I haven't compared the the Jedi Luke that's coming out, that should be coming out very soon to the one that's in this two pack. But I don't know. I just I feel like that is that's not that great of a value. <laughs> no, the the only thing different I can see in the Jedi Luke is you can sit him Indian style, mm -hmm. which in Black Series terms that's pretty incredible, but is it worth the $45 figure so you could sit your black your your black series Luke Indian style, you mm -hmm. know, and reenact that uh that scene? Yeah, I don't know. So yeah, I mean that it, it's like when uh the Mandalorian and, and uh Ahsoka came back out, they threw a best car spear in there, and it's like, here's a repack for $45, and yo, know, you get the best car spear with this. Right. Which you know, if anybody with a 3D printer can three three D print a best car spear for <laughs> a dollar exactly um not i mean granted you had to pay 300 dollars for the 3d printer but <laughs> but man you make you make 300 beskar spears and sell them at a dollar a piece you got your money back right exactly <laughs> set um, up at toylana five bucks hell set yeah. it, sell them for five and you'd still sell out right so uh back to toylana i i was the the four horsemen was was the highlight of the show for me i can't even begin to tell you how many times I went back to that table over mm -hmm. just to see if they put something new out. And I actually had to stop myself from going because I would, I would want to buy something every time I ended up buying five things from them over the course of a weekend, which was again, small potatoes because my buddy Ricky ended up getting a like he I think he bought two boxes full of figures. It's, it was crazy how much stuff he ended up yeah. getting, but and we have um, another friend that spent probably two k over over the weekend at Mythic Legions. Um, uh, yeah, I, I was doing the same thing, and you so. you literally have to stop because there was at least two other figures I could have bought, like the Tila mm -hmm. figure, and then they had the vampire figure with the hood. That both figures I really dug, but I'm like, that's another eighty bucks. I just got yep. stopped. I wanted the Centaur. That's the one that I kind of regret not picking up, mm -hmm. um, because I saw a really cool. Like, uh, you know, a main playability uh, thing with these figures is that they're all modular. So, yes, you're buying a specific character, but they're made to pull apart and you can make your own figures. Like, you can use the head of this character with the chest of this character and the legs of this character. So, like, that's that's one of the big things is, the, like, the pop and swap customization because they're all mm -hmm. modular. Right. And 
um i i wanted i after toylana ended i saw a really cool pop and swap with the centaur figure and i was like damn i regret not getting that centaur figure now yeah because you were you and uh, robert or was oh, richard i don't i don't richard, know why yeah. I, I keep going and call him robert and <laughs> he just gets to the point where he just answers to both which i'm like yeah you know what i do that too um but yeah you were saying that the the body can come off so you could put another totally different body on the the, yeah. the centaur on the horse so. yeah so um, I, I i regret not getting that but yeah i don't um, want to go on mythic i want i want to stay on mythic legions another okay. couple of minutes before we yeah, go sure. back to toylana but um no i just love the community of that you know uh and i'm just because it you're you're when you're at the show you're like all right i asked because david from second chance was like who are those guys selling are they you know street team members who who are they what are they doing and so i asked and they're like no we're the owners mm -hmm. and their passion for everything is, is just you know we talked about this yesterday you sit there talking and you're just like here's my wallet just mm -hmm. whatever you want. I mean, if mm -hmm. you're on the fence about buying, getting into these guys, you talk to the to the owners and you you listen to them and you talk to the fans and you're like, I got to get in on this because it's just a totally. I mean, I love my Star Wars, but Star Wars has become very toxic, uh, you know, over the past few years. Mm -hmm. You do have that toxic element, and you know we're trying to fight that, but Mythic Legions is just they don't care they're like all right you know you buy one or you buy a hundred they're just mm -hmm. as welcoming that whole community is just it's totally different i uh yeah and there there was also a dude at the booth by the name of uh walter who mm -hmm. has who runs the the uh fi the i guess it's i don't know if it's official but it's it's the biggest mythic legions fan page on facebook called the mythic legions cabal and he every time he goes to shows he has cabal t-shirts made and he just hands them out for free yeah like he, he like he absorbs the cost of that and he just hands them out for free and i and i ended up getting one and i uh, ended up chatting with walter and you know i i got him in my video like he has a good 10 minute chunk uh in the video that i and i and i, I wanted to give him all the time he wanted because i wanted him to you know i wanted to showcase him and what he does with the mythic legions cabal and just the the broader mythic legions community as well mm -hmm. um and he let me tell you the nicest dude oh, the yeah. coolest guy the nicest guy um i just i did not anytime i went towards or to or hung out at that mythic legions table everyone was really cool with what everyone else the the owners were super cool um i i talked to I ended up having a spontaneous combustion about or not spontaneous combustion. <laughs> <laughs> I randomly exploded. I went, yeah. I went back to the drum set and all we saw was a little pile of dust. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I, uh, I had a spontaneous conversation <laughs> with uh, one of the, one of the designers, I think his name's Joe about mm -hmm. just some popping and swapping yeah. uh, for some upcoming figures. And and he was uh, what happened was i mentioned something that i had seen uh, it was a digi bash that somebody created on the cabal and i asked him about it and then i i actually saw him i saw the gears working in his head and he he started to uh test out that hypothesis in real time and he started to pop and swap the figures he's like well if we did this and we did this and like i could just see his like his brain in motion and i'm like i did not expect him to like go like which was super cool right and, uh it was a really cool conversation and he goes like man you know what i think i can make this work and like, right. i just saw him go to town and, and that, it was I, so cool right i saw them do that a couple of different times where they're pulling pop and swapping and stuff and uh you know they also had like uh test shots and they were not afraid to let you touch them they were you know i had several times i reached over and you know talking to somebody and i'm like yeah look at this you're picking up the test shot and like showing it to somebody nobody's stopping you i mean mm -hmm. i'm sure they're paying attention but they're mm -hmm. not telling you to put it down they want you to touch their stuff you know touch mm -hmm. touch them and play with them and see what they are and, and um you know like that one green guy the the big huge guy from uh cosmic legions i'm telling my wife i'm like when that was released it was a 60 dollar figure and she's like oh, excuse me mm -hmm. it, was, it was what mm -hmm. you know and that's a 200 dollars, probably a 200 dollars figure in star wars mm -hmm. or 150 you know um 
So it, you know, when, when my wife can look at, look at them and she doesn't complain that I'm spending money on them. I kind of mm-hmm. just, okay, great. You know, she, cause she knows, you know, she knows the value and she, as long as I don't go overboard, it's fine. Cause we, when I did the the pre-order, I pre-ordered three of them and she's like, you know, now's the time to get them mm-hmm. because if you wait longer, you're going to double, you're going to pay double. Mm-hmm. So uh, I, I'm really, I'm really happy that the, and you know, I'm, I'm by no means uh, uh, an original fan from day one for mythic legions. I've only been actively collecting them for maybe a year and a half at most. Uh-huh. Um, but I have noticed that since I've come aboard, they've started to reach a broader audience. Yeah. And I'm one, I think they deserve it because I think one, they're good people. And two, uh, they, they make good quality figures. Mm -hmm. And I would like to see this flourish into something that's, that's, you know, uh, a a big, I want to, I, it would be really cool to see, see mythic legions on like toy retailer pegs and not have to be in approved, but, uh, I'm not sure if that's their style. Right. Right. So I don't know if I'm going to ever walk into a target or a Walmart and be able to pull a mythic legion off of a peg. Um, I kind of don't want to do that. I kind of like the fact that you yeah, have to hunt it's, them it's, down. It's, it's kind of, I don't know. It kind of makes it a little bit more special. Right. If you have to go through certain means to acquire them. Um, as far as like, um, approved approved e-tailers and retailers right so yeah uh, but I, I don't know I, I think that yeah I, I think you're probably right and i and i say that not to be elitist or anything because i i mean the the toys are there for everybody to enjoy right exactly um i i, I would love for them to be able to uh, you know uh, gain more popularity i'm not saying that they're not popular now but i would love them to continue that momentum of them gaining popularity yeah i um uh... But I want to get back to Walter for a minute because yeah, yeah. every time you saw him, he was just like, "Hey, man, what's up?" You know, and yeah. he at least he may not remember you, but he pretends to remember you. You know, or he, he at least probably he remembers least, your he, face, right? He's probably like me. It's like, "Hey, dude, how you doing?" Because I, I don't if I it's guy and dude and man mm-hmm. and ace and you know, um, mm-hmm. and then you know, there's even, only one Walter. But then you know, the yeah, <laughs> I, I I'll show Grace. He probably doesn't remember my name, which is fine, but. Everybody remembers him because there's only one of him, but he's right. meeting like 30 people a day. Yeah. So. And, and yeah, he was, uh, you know, like it, oh, when I posted in the, in the cabal, he's like, dude, I told you I was a plastic crack dealer, you know, and he's just, he's interacting. <laughs> he's, he's really, it's like, it, it, it gives you, it's like, I want to be like Walter, you know, when it comes mm-hmm. to star Wars, you know, just be that addicting, uh, you know, and that, that good of a, uh, ambassador for, for the thing for star Wars, for the stuff I love. And uh, it's it that dude's just contagious, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, he's he's a super good dude. And then, like, kind of uh, the original point I was getting at, it was like anytime I would go up to the table, mm-hmm. like there was nobody that was like, "Hey, man, keep keep it moving, keep it moving." Right. Like everyone was like really cool with everyone else, and you know, everybody who had already gone through once was really cool about letting the people who hadn't gone through go through. And then once the line dissipated everyone was really cool about just walking up and checking stuff out and and Mm -hmm. yeah like all in all it was a fantastic experience and i think that just the mythic the mythic legions and just the four horsemen in general uh stole the show like that was that was the highlight of the show they definitely did uh yeah but uh you know they were it just like you were saying there, like with the line and stuff, that's the only time they were like being sticklers for stuff. They were like, all right, we're not going to sell before, you know, doors are at six. Even though you're in here now, I'm not selling to you till my line's done. You, you're you more mm-hmm. than welcome to go stand in line. And, you know, but we've had people that have been here all day waiting to mm-hmm. get in to buy these figures. And we're going to do this all weekend. So mm-hmm. don't think you're special because you're in here. You know, right. and that, that was the only time that they were kind of, you know, they were just being sticklers for the rules is when it came to that I line. Think, and, I don't even think it was like being stickler. I think they just wanted to be fair. Right. Right. That's what I mean. They were oh, trying yeah. to be fair. They were, that was the only time the stickler, you know, quote unquote, but they yeah. were trying to be fair to the people that had waited. I, um, I also know that this is their first time in the South. Yeah. So this is the first show they've done because uh, they, they're from Jersey so, and they'll go, they'll go, uh, West a little bit to power con, um, but they they're primarily like a, a northeastern show company. So the fact that they came to Toylana and it was their first show was also a very big deal. 
Right. And, and I talked to them a little bit and they were like, you know, Toilana wants us back. I, I don't know what we kind of want to go to Florida to do something. We may mm-hmm. do something to where we go to Florida, do a big show in Florida, but have our street team here. And, and then we'll come back in two years. So, you, you know, it, it, it's a, it's a pretty cool time. Uh, I didn't realize that I don't want to, you know, but anyway, that I didn't realize they'd been around for as long as they had, uh, you know, I guess, cause what you were saying, the four horsemen has been around a lot longer than mythic legions has. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, it, 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 it's just refreshing when you see a toy company that's there for their fans. They're like, they're not, I mean, they're there to make money, but the fans come first. Mm-hmm. No, no, I, I agree. 100%. Um, do you want to move on and talk about the rest yeah, of Yeah, let's Toilana? let's that's enough uh Mythic Legion talk. Um, let's let's finish Toylana. Oh, real quick, my Mythic yeah. Legion's pickups. I got the Kawaros, yes. I got a Varg, which was the deluxe vampire dwarf. Yeah. Uh I got um the other the the counterpart to your red minotaur. Uh-huh. I got the other guy. So I got the the one that you could do the skeleton or the uh hoplite character. Okay. Um, I also got the scaphoid, which was the green skeleton. And then I picked up the half giant Cyclops. The, his name is Archimedes. Gotcha. So, so those, those are the ones that I picked up. Uh, still should have got that centaur. Uh, <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. Trust me. I'm, I'm kicking myself for not picking some stuff up. I've got, yeah. I've got some people looking out for me. That's so. awesome. Um, so the rest of the, so the venue itself was, so, uh, it was, an, it was a new hotel. It was off Peachtree industrial last year. It was in, in Marietta, Georgia. Yep. And to be honest with you, a lot of people complained about the the size of the venue in Marietta. I actually didn't hate it. It was, it, it, it did get a little, uh, nuts to butts, uh, in some areas. Mm-hmm. Um, but I didn't hate it. Also the fact that Marietta is just like 20 minutes away from us. Yeah, home, exactly. Right? Yeah. Um, the, the new venue, the show floor space i think was bigger right that main that main room was bigger so i think it gave everybody some more elbow room because i never at once in any of the rooms felt like i was encroaching on somebody's personal space right um and so my i guess if i had any complaint of the or critique not even a complaint it was a critique of the new hotel was that there was like zero lobby Right. There was there was no lobby and there was no place to aside from the hotel restaurant and bar to just sit down and take five. Right. But then if you sit there, you feel bad because there are people that might actually want to sit and eat and drink. But right. You're taking up a seat when then the you know the hotel servers come by and they're like, Oh, do you want anything? And you're like, No, I'm just sitting, you know, like they're not gonna kick you out, even though they probably have every right to. But I felt like I every time I was sitting there and I wasn't eating or drinking i was taking away a seat from somebody who didn't want to eat and drink so that would that would be my only my only critique of that that new venue but everything else was fantastic right um so i walking around the main showroom uh, i also pixel dan was there Mm -hmm. and he wrote a book about uh vintage masters of the universe figures and i had been wanting to purchase that book for a while but i had also known that he does a lot of these toy shows and I wanted to get one from him personally. So I, that night, whenever he didn't have a line, I went up and I chatted with him and I got him in the video. Uh, but I picked up a book from him and he was really cool. He joked around with us and uh, what I thought was really awesome. And he didn't have to do this was that, you know, he, he remembered us throughout the weekend. So uh-huh. anytime we would pass through the room looking for stuff, you know, he would wave to us and be like, oh, hey guys, how's it going? And which was just really nice of him. He was right. really nice and really cool. So I picked up his book uh, and, you know, there were a lot of similar vendors. Our buddy Martin, who puts on the the toy swap, he was there in the back, uh, the back wall of that room selling some really cool vintage stuff. There was uh, the Nowhere Comics. I think they're based out of Miami. They, I see them at every, uh, every Toy Lana. And th- those guys have some good stuff too. Right. Um, there was there was a, a heavy GI Joe presence there, and I know that like there's been a lot of talk about. Uh, I, I I it might have actually been you and Jason. I can't remember, but I know that like people were surprised that there was as much GI Joe there as there I. Was. Yeah, I was really surprised. I and, and kind of annoyed, truthfully. Uh, if if you want to, you know, get into it, uh, because they split the shows up. 
they went from being Joe Lana. First, so it, it started Joe off, Lana. It was, it was Joe Lana. Right. Then, the, then there were other toy toy vendors that came in. So it mm-hmm. turned into Toy Lanta. Yep. And then isn't the story that like I guess the Joe Lanta guys were a little miffed. So then they created the new Joe Lanta. Yep. Okay. They, they were getting mad because everybody was coming, going to these 12 inch G.I. Joe. You know, that then it's not the three and three quarter G.I. Joe, it's the 12 inch G.I. Mm-hmm. Joe's. Um, and these people were they were apparently getting aggravated that people were going and asking for other toy lines. So that's that's the story as to why they created Joe split them back up and did Joe Lana and Toy Lana so that the Joe guys could have their own show and the toy guy, everybody else could have the other show. And when I walked in that main floor, I was like, this is Joe Lana again. Why are all these Joe guys here when they wanted to have their own show? And it felt like the main, the good, uh, good booths we're all GI Joe guys. And it, it kind of was a little, little perturbing because a half of that big room was 12 inch GI Joe's. I, if not more. I, I did see a lot of 12 inch Joe's and I definitely did see a lot of repeat vendors from uh, the previous year. Uh-huh. I guess it does like, I, I'm not surprised mm-hmm. that the Joe guys were there. Like it, it didn't bother me that the Joe guys were there because gi joe is like that kicks off like that is the action figure right gi joe was the thing like the first quote-unquote action figure that kicked off the action figure revolution um so the fact that gi joe did have a presence because gi joe is still a toy it's called toy lanta right and gi joe is still a toy um I, i guess i could probably see the argument where like those guys wanted to their own show but i guess my counter argument to that would be well why set up at one show when you can set up at two and make twice the money right and so yeah i i I see your point too but i guess it just i don't know i felt like there was a split and you know because joe lana was like if you're gonna come set up here you've got to have so many gi joes or action adventure stuff you can't Mm -hmm. have space stuff Mm -hmm. and so so that kind of was a little bit of an a, a an irk, but then I talked to people who set up there and they're like, I brought my normal setup and I didn't have any GI Joes. Right. And I did great. So I guess also like looking at GI Joe is that the, I noticed that there wasn't a lot of star Wars specific vendors this year. Yeah. I saw, I saw there was, there was uh AVT. Right. Who's heavy on star Wars. And then I saw like one, maybe two or three other vendors that had a handful of uh, like more recent black series and vintage collection stuff. Mm -hmm. I did not see a lot of star Wars vendors at this show this year. There there wasn't a lot of star Wars vendors, but there was a lot of star Wars. There was, um, and it also was, I mean, there, cause I think there's, there's some change going on in the star Wars hobby as far as uh, people not buying the, the higher end stuff. Because there were some hundred dollar men on card things that sat the whole weekend. Mm-hmm. That I was like, if I was a men on card collector, I'd have picked those up. Because mm-hmm. they should have been, you know, fifty to sixty dollars more than what they were, and they sat all weekend. Uh, but then, like the the five dollar buckets, those were getting, you know, people were going through that. I, I saw somebody buy uh, one of the Ewok battle wagons. That was a, I think the guy had like seven hundred dollars on it. And I think he he got a couple of hundred dollars off, which mm-hmm. he still got a hell of a deal uh, for that. Uh, but a lot of the Star Wars sat if it was high end, uh, and I didn't I didn't pay enough attention to everything else to see what was moving. Uh, but right now, I think a lot of the higher end stuff that was selling two years ago is now sitting. Mm-hmm. And, and I think Star Wars people are are like in the same boat that I'm kind of in, where it's like I've got everything Star Wars that I really truly want. I'm not really going to upgrade anything because to buy things twice doesn't right. make sense to me. Um, and it, I think Star Wars is just kind of in, kind of in a lull right now. I I kind of think, and you know, I'm probably wrong on this because I don't collect vintage, and I don't I don't collect the higher end carded vintage figures, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But I think I kind of think that Star Wars is stagnant at the moment. I agree, and I think it's very evident that Star Wars is stagnant after that big collecting boom pandemic and just just post-pandemic 
um, or immediately post pandemic. Um, the that I think Star Wars is now getting to a point, especially after those those two giant auctions that just happened. Yep. I think that Star Wars is now pricing people out of collecting Star Wars. And I yeah. think I think the beanie baby equation is going to come in where the bottom is going to fall out and that people are going to have these carded figures and they're going to ask tens of thousands of dollars for them for like, you know, this Boba Fett or, or, or that Boba Fett or this, this Vader or that, you know, um, and no one's going to buy them. And I think the bottom is going to fall out. And I, and I, I think some of those prices will tank. I, yeah. I won't say they won't tank to what they were 10, 12 or 20 years ago, but I do think that a lot of people might just go, can't afford that can't buy it and then right. a lot of people are going to be sitting on you, you, it's cool to say that you have all these cool vintage figures but if you if you're a vendor and you're trying to sell them the, the whole point is that you're trying to sell them and if right. you're sitting on them you're not selling them so what's what good is it doing anybody nothing right and i heard on a, another podcast somebody was talking because they just did a, a proto a prototypes and production david quinn's podcast mm -hmm. they just did a, a columbus toy show and one of the vendors were there and he was like you know if i spent you know, pre pan or during the pandemic, I spent seventy dollars on something, and now it's sixty. I'm losing money. Or if I sell, if I yeah, because get the prices have just dropped, have just done that. You know, have dropped that much. Or you know, mm -hmm. and, and as a vendor, if like I said, you know, you spend seventy dollars on something, you've got to sell it for a hundred to make money, and nobody's gonna buy it at a hundred because it's worth sixty five right now. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think, where Star Wars is at, that people went crazy during the pandemic and finished off their run. Well, number one, I think people were able to finish off runs uh, during the pandemic and people uh, overpaid for stuff because mm -hmm. it did get crazy. I mean, there's still some pieces that are crazy because like a yak face, uh, that guy that had the uh, psych kill, he had a yak face and he wanted 600 bucks for it. And Woo, nope, dude, I paid in 17, I paid 225 for mine. And I was like, whoa, and it, it was like, I had the money, uh, so it wasn't, but it was still, it was like, holy crap, I just paid $220 for a loose vintage mm -hmm. figure. Mm -hmm. And now they're one, I mean, uh, uh, you know, a blue snags at the $300 range. And, and I think at the same time I paid a hundred dollars for my blue snag in 17. Mm -hmm. So it's just, it's, it's crazy. What's where star Wars is at right now. Yeah. I, um, I don't know, man. Like, yeah, like I think I say it every time we talk. It's like the I feel like Star Wars collectors are a very specific type of collector too. Yeah, I, I see a lot of things that go on in the Star Wars collecting community that I don't necessarily see in like Transformers or Marvel or even Mythic Legions or you know name mm -hmm. insert insert franchise collector here. Name a franchise collection yeah. here, right? Um, so I. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, and it's, I have so many thoughts on it that it's difficult to articulate <laughs> at this moment right now. Right. I, I, I could probably yeah. write an essay on on the stuff I've just observed. Right. I mean, granted, this is also the stuff that one man has observed, not <laughs> not multiple people. But so take that for what it's worth. But right. It's, well, I, uh, and and I think what happens is you've got people in the Star Wars community that have been collecting, and and I don't want to gatekeeping is a strong term mm -hmm. and I, I we have them in the community and you get people that are just like oh you collect modern stuff i don't want to hang out with you because you mm -hmm. collect modern stuff you don't have the vintage stuff that i collect and it's like who gives a shit man it's star wars and that's yeah. where i'm at you know it's like hey oh i don't care you're collecting star wars we're both into the same thing we collect differently i was able to amass my collection years ago when stuff was cheap and you can't do that. You I mean, I'd hate to do what I, you know, look at my collection and try to do a, a full 92 run nowadays. There's no way in hell I could afford it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not when, you know, Yak Face is $600, pop up R2s in that, in that range. You know, I, I probably got $600 in my last 17 and my, all my last 17, maybe a thousand. But nowadays you can't even get two figures for that. I know that's crazy, man. And that's a, a large portion of why I haven't jumped in vintage. So I just, well, I don't have the money. I don't have the space <laughs> and I definitely don't have the time. Right. So, and, and if you're going to spend a thousand dollars on figures, 
four horsemen, man. Last night to get some mixes. Exactly. <laughs> right. I um so the the show floor, uh the main toy room was fantastic. Yeah. Um the there were t- the two side rooms. There's one where the the Kenner uh the former Kenner guys were there. Yep. Um and there were a couple of, of interesting booths in there. I didn't really spend too much time in that room specifically. The room right next to it, um had the dude with uh the posters he was trying to pedal he had like the, the big corner booth oh yeah, yeah 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 all yeah. right this is this is something that annoys me because he was he was at the uh the show last time and man i <laughs> so no, nothing against this dude but it always bothers me being a guest whenever when I, not a guest but when i pay and i go uh pay to go to a show Mm-hmm. I want to browse. I want to look through. I want to, I want to not feel pressured to buy something from somebody. Right. And this dude was just, he was laying it on super thick and he was not, he was not being subtle about it at all. So right. like I walked in and I was wearing my, uh, my Jar Jar Binks Misa fits shirt. <laughs> it looks like the misfits. Oh yeah. 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 Jar Jar yeah. Binks. Uh, and then, so I walked in and I just started to like casually look in the direction of the, of, of the posters. And he goes, Hey, I have some misfits posters over here. You want it? I've got like three or four misfits posters. You should get, I saw your misfits t-shirt. So I have some misfits posters over here. And like, I hate that. I hate that. So and yeah. then he's like, he's like, I always try to like, I point out stuff that people are wearing. And then I point in the direction of the stuff I have. I'm like, buddy for the future reference you came on a little too strong yeah so like i whenever piece, like vendors do that to me 100 i will not spend money at your at mm-hmm. your booth and that annoys the hell out of me so much because <laughs> i have an entire show to look at the last thing i need is somebody trying to give me the hard sell on something that's related to a t-shirt that i'm wearing right well and so, yeah, he did that to Mandy, and I, we were both like, "Dude, we ain't got room for posters, man." We mm-hmm. are. You could tell I don't have room for art. And the <laughs> irony is, I probably would have picked up one or two things because I did see two or three posters that I really liked. But because he was that pushy, no, nah, you're not getting my money. Right. Um, now, I hate that. I yeah, hate I do. Yeah, she, Mandy, did wear like an ET po- shirt one day or saturday or when she came on sunday and there were a few people that were just like oh yeah i got et stuff over here that's different you know if Mm -hmm. you do see the shirt i have on and say oh yeah i've got some stuff over here let me know if you have any questions that's a totally different sale but that dude he put it on hard yeah he um so um i didn't get anything from that room and then there was the the bottom corner room where a couple of my friends were set up um, I saw some interesting stuff in there, but again, nothing I walked away with. And then there was the whole, the, uh, the X-Wing. <laughs> yes. Uh, which was a cool, which was a fantastic name mm-hmm. for, for that, that whole wing of the show. And I didn't realize how big that back room was until yeah. I walked in because you're, so you're going down the, the hallway from the lobby and then you take that hard left and it's like, okay, it's a tiny room. It's got three vendors in it. But then there's the room ca- uh, connected to that. And when you walk in, it's just another large room. And you're like, oh, right. I didn't know that this was hiding all the way back here. Right. And that room was like the size of a like a smaller toy swap. Mm-hmm. It had it a was, lot of vendors was, in there. It had a lot of vendors. That room was heavy on the vintage, I noticed. Yes. I think vintage that was turtles, their plan. Vintage, yeah. Uh, That's was where the- AVT was set up. That's yep. where, um, oh, man, I... I, I forgot the is it fernando who sets up the cool dioramas yeah yeah he had an awesome uh naboo battle scene diorama yep. this this time so yeah and they had our, our buddies and nerd you were back there yeah uh, so there were there was there that was real heavy on a lot of a lot of vintage uh mm-hmm. and then they had a then they had like the mythic legions uh customizers were back there and i'm like why aren't these guys right next to mythic legions because yeah they're probably, they would do a lot better business but you well, know. I wonder if there was some kind of weird, like, I, I don't think that the Mythic Legions guys were mad that they were there, but mm-hmm. I think that there might be some weird, like, logistics behind that. Like, like we don't want, I I, I think the two didn't want to take sales away from the oh, others. So that's you. why they probably put them in two separate, separate sections. Right. And, so and, was, and, and they had a whole line of, 
customizers back there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I almost bought one of those custom figures. Yeah. yeah there was, there's a really cool skeleton uh, with a jack-o'-lantern head. I do. That, that really one was cool. awesome. If oh, I was I almost, a big, yeah. I'm surprised you didn't buy that as big of a Halloween fan as you are. Yeah. I, you know, I, I, I had the money, but I was like, listen, I could spend this hundred dollars on this one custom figure, which is not a bad price because you, you got to think you're, you're paying $40 for a base figure. Mm -hmm. And then you're buying a custom piece that has been painted and created. So you're paying an artist for their time. Right. Right. Like, right. When you buy a, a poster or a print or a painting or something. So you, you are by all accounts buying an art piece. So a hundred dollars right. for one of those is not bad at all. No. Cause so. I mean, considering the head is probably a 30, to, a 20 to $30 head. Exactly. Um, but I was like, I could buy one of these guys for, for a hundo, or I can go back and grab two more figures that I want for, <laughs> right. for and still have $20 left over. So that's, <laughs> that, that's what I ended up doing. I have that battle in my head. Every show, every time I buy something, you're, you're, mm -hmm. you're doing the calculations. Um, did I, I'm trying to remember if I picked up anything. I didn't pick up anything for me from that room. Mm -hmm. There was a really cool booth all the way against the back wall. Um, if you remember, he, he was the middle dude in the back wall. If, so if you're looking at the back wall to the right would have been the booth with all the really cool box dino riders. Uh -huh. And then to the left of him would have been the booth with all the Shogun warriors. Okay. Oh, yeah. So, so it was this, this dude in, in the middle. And up front, he had a whole bunch of vintage for, you know, 80s figures. And I was flipping through and I found a complete food fighter figure oh, wow. for my buddy, Dan, who lives out in Jersey. And Dan's always helped me find Mythic Legion stuff since they do shows up there often. So I, I sent him a text and he's like, oh man, that's a good price. And that's complete. Pick it up for me. So I mm -hmm. picked it up. Um, uh, this complete food fighter for about 40 bucks. Nice. Um, so I'm going to send that off to him. I don't think I purchased anything for myself in that room but i did like uh there there were a couple of um kraken figures out uh loose kraken figures from the clash of the titans line uh-huh from the early 80s and those looked awesome i like i i didn't know that they made those mm -hmm. uh i found out about them a, a couple of years ago but every time i see one it's no less impressive it right. just looks so cool you're talking about the big huge Kraken, yeah the, right yeah the big kraken with like four arms yeah yeah, yeah the the old harry housing mm -hmm. uh stop motion animation yeah so um maybe it was harry house and I, I can't remember i think it was but um i didn't yeah i didn't buy anything out there there were some really cool things in the hallway from the hallway vendors but i didn't buy anything from them and then the only other thing that I purchased was in the in the main room on the main uh, horizontal aisle, I saw a lunchbox, a GoBots lunchbox. Uh -huh. And the lunchbox itself had a couple of nicks and scratches on it, but the the picture, the painted picture mm -hmm. was was pristine. Nice. And it came with a thermos and the thermos, the picture on the thermos was pristine as well. And they only wanted fifteen dollars for it. Wow! So I picked it up, and I had I, I it was a really good price because I remember seeing a different like it was the same lunchbox, but from a different vendor last year that was asking twenty five for it, and I almost bought it then, mm. but I didn't. So I, when I saw this one for fifteen, I jumped on it. Nice. So, but yeah, man, I you know I was fortunate enough to meet so many new friends and some other YouTubers that I follow and was able to go like uh grab bite you know dinner with one or two of them one of the mm -hmm. nights and all around it was just it was a fun show yeah because yeah like I, like i said in your video i i changed my head space for this and turned it into a convention in my head and it was more mm -hmm. you know you make it more into hanging out with people versus shopping for toys and it's a totally different experience right right this you know as as much as like it, it might sound ludicrous, but Toylana, I think, has replaced Dragon Con as my most looked forward to show out of the year. Dude, I could see that. I enjoy Dragon Con, but it's, I'll go every couple of years. 
uh-huh. you, you know, or if I know that somebody's coming, like right now I'm the, I'm waiting the rebels, the, the animated rebels cast are making the rounds. So I'm like, I hope they come to toy to, uh, dragon con because then I'll, you know, I'll go and get some autographs. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that would be the only reason that would get me to dragon con this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, but I'll, I'll, I, it dragon. Con, the thing about dragon con is it feels like it repeats like every other vendor is the same vendor. Yeah. Uh, but, but you don't also go to Dragon. Really, yeah, you don't go to Dragon Con to buy stuff. Like that's right. a perk, right? Like going yeah. to the vendor space is kind of a perk, and it's a it is it is the same vendors every time. I very rarely see somebody new. Right. Um, but I uh, I don't know. I tend to go. That's an art show for me. Like I tend oh, yeah. to spend a lot of my money in the art room there. <laughs> yeah we went a couple of years ago and it, it never fails man you always got that one you're looking at and you're like well they're there you know you pick up like two pieces and they're oh yeah man they're they're like you get three more pieces for 50 dollars, and you're like damn it here you go yeah so you end up walking away with a lot more art than what you were expecting uh mm-hmm. but yeah the, the that you're right dragon con has become an art show and you go to uh hang out and and see the cosplay because the cosplay mm-hmm. is incredible at dragon con although there were some good cosplayers this year at toylana too there were there was a dude that dressed up like war duke from dungeons and dragons i saw that that dude had that some was balls. so good um there was a the preview night there was a dude dressed up like major blood mm-hmm. from the gi joe cartoon which was really good um then there were a, a couple people who had their own like cosplay table yeah and the on Saturday, they cosplayed as Mythic Legions characters. I saw that. And I didn't it was know. So good. Yeah, I was like, okay, are these really Mythic Legions characters, or is it people that are dressing up to, you know, that it's mm-hmm. close enough to a Mythic Legions character? Yeah, no, they they were they were Mythic Legions. There was a Goblin and a Skeleton Warrior, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Um, and then those same two people cosplayed as Masters of the Universe characters on Sunday. There was a a tila and i think it was a t- it was a tila, tila and, and the merman. merman yeah yeah i felt really bad for tila because i was walking the opposite way and there was a guy walking behind her going i like your armor and you're just like guy stop oh no yeah oh, no because <laughs> oh, no. her butt's hanging out and everybody's like oh man look at tila look at her butt and i'm like come on guys nah I'm like yeah <laughs> come on cosplay is not consent come on, right it's moving. like you know what and you know get get a quick view but then don't stare you know yes she looked great as tila but there's no need to like stare her down right because you could tell she was getting you know at yeah. least it, it felt she was a little bit uncomfortable but it's mm-hmm. like come on guys uh yeah man uh, just all in all it was uh, a fun weekend and it's it for me it was kind of a blur uh-huh. I, I actually brought my buddy Jeremy, who was in town, and he hadn't been to a toy show ever. Wow. So it was his first toy convention, and he ended up picking up a handful of loose Marvel Legends. I know Richard ended up buying a handful of Mythic Legions the first night, and then as he was walking, this is a funny story. So uh, we were walking around on saturday and he's like man i have money that i know i want to spend but i just can't find anything he's like yep. i guess i'll just buy some more mythic legion stuff <laughs> so i was like all right well let's go let's go grab a bite to eat and then if you still want some we'll come back and grab some he's like okay so while we were at lunch he was scrolling on his phone we left the property for lunch we went up to peach tree corners and ate at uh the lazy dog that's a great like, place yeah it was probably like a 10 minute drive so yeah um as he was, as we were eating uh, lunch, he was scrolling through his phone, uh, and then he tapped it a couple times and went, "Well, I just bought a PlayStation 5. Oh, jeez! <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "What?" He's like, "Yeah, I guess Target was having a, a deal on PlayStation Fives where uh, the the God of War pack with the was which is normally like almost six hundred dollars. I think it was like five hundred and ten bucks, but he used his Target card and got." five percent off oh so yeah i think he got it for under 500 bucks and nice. he's, he's like well i spent all my toy land of money on a playstation 5 so. <laughs> <laughs> well, well that's a good hack if you guys you know join the target red club and get a red yeah. card because you save five percent and and you could put it on your phone and you just scan mm-hmm. it so it, i always get mad if i leave my phone in the car and i'm like i don't need it i'm just gonna run in real quick and you end up buying something and yeah like, damn it and free shipping if you do the order off the website too yeah so join the so, red club at target um 
this was not sponsored by Target. <laughs> uh, yeah, fun show. I, f- I felt like it was kind of a blur because I was trying to equally hang out with everybody, say yeah. hi to everybody, but I was also trying to film. Yeah. So I feel like I blinked and then six hours went by. Yep. So. Um, what, because I've, I, they haven't announced uh, 2024 20, yet. But I'm also hearing that they're trying to move it to, uh, or they're thinking about moving it to a convention center, so you can have it more like Joe Fest. Uh, I wouldn't be mad at that because I thought the layout of Joe Fest was really, really good. And if if they have that convention center, then that would allow them more floor space for more vendors. Right. So the show show has potential to to grow. Yeah. Which I think would be a good move for them. Um, I guess it would kind of suck for people who like to stay at the hotel where the, the vendors or not the vendors, but the, uh, the show gets put on. So, but I mean, you know, you can't, every show can't be in a hotel convention space, but uh, I wouldn't be mad at that. Yeah. Well, plus I'm sure there's hotels that are really close to a convention center. Uh, I mean, there's a really nice one right down the street in Cobb County that I keep mm-hmm. telling them, you know, go look. I don't know what it costs to rent it, but mm-hmm. it, I'm sure you could put on a hell of a toy show there. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I also think they may need to consider taking Sunday out because Sunday was was deader than a doornail, man. Um, I would keep Sunday in. You think? I, yeah. Yeah, because I, I feel like. I feel like Sunday's a good option for people that can't go on Fridays. Yeah. Like, I mean, for, unless you take off of work, people get off of work at like, let's say five, the preview night starts at six. You're not going to go all the way home, change, and then make it back in an hour. So I think, I think having Sunday and just, you know, having it start later and and end a bit sooner Mm -hmm. is still a good move. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, I, I, and then I heard another rumor speaking of Joe Fest, uh, I heard that they're thinking of moving it to Atlanta versus taking it out of Augusta. I've only heard it from one person. Have you heard anything? No, I haven't heard anything. Because because it's it's called Joe Fest, but it's also called the Augusta Toy Show. Right. So unless they're thinking about branching out and doing two shows, one in Augusta and one in Atlanta, I don't know. Huh. It'd be good for for us, then we wouldn't have to drive to Augusta. But it's a fun right. drive. It's a right. it makes a it makes a long day, but it's a fun day. And it yeah. And whenever we were, you know, when we had a car full of people, it didn't seem like it was a two hour and forty minute drive. Yeah. Well, because we were we were creating content that whole both rides. <laughs> we, we, yeah, it was that the the, uh, the drive up there though, like in the morning. I guess it was just because I was wake. I woke up early. <laughs> <laughs> it, jason was already in the car in the cul-de-sac waiting for me <laughs> Jason's the first one always, he's jason. up at like 6 30 7 o'clock every morning man i'm i'm like man let me sleep till like 7 38 uh because <laughs> it's it, like we record at 9 30 and on saturdays and i'm like i'll roll out of bed and i'm like man it's only eight o'clock man Give me <laughs> another half an hour but i know i gotta get up and get coffee and get going um so we, we can record but yeah, Jason's a, a very early riser. He's on top of things. So yes, he is. So I'm not. I'm not mad at it. Nuh-uh. But awesome. Yeah, I. I, dude, I've been going to Toylanta for like ten years, and and this year I was not very excited about going going about it going into it, but coming out of it, it got my excitement back, and and I mm. think it was, you know, you realize the more you get into this, toys become less and less important. Mm-hmm. And you've got to adjust your mindset to that. And once you're, mm-hmm. you adjust your mindset to that, you're going to have a great time. Mm-hmm. No, I'm right there with you. Yeah. If, if, if four horsemen didn't show up, I think I probably would have spent under a hundred dollars. Yeah, weekend, so. <laughs> exactly. I, I, I would have, I would have probably walked away with cash in my pocket. Cause I, yeah. um, I went in with about a hundred dollars. My budget for Toylana was about a hundred dollars. And then I saw the four horsemen stuff and you can, I think I spent like 200 bucks just on four horsemen. Yeah. And then, then Sorry spend, about that. that's all right, <laughs> dude. It, it, you, you need to scratch that itch, man. And mm-hmm. it just, 
you know, and, and, and it just, it's weird because you're looking, you know, you're looking for stuff to buy and you just, you right now it's impossible, not impossible, but it's really hard. Cause I was talking to one of the Kenner guys and he's like, what are you looking for? I'm like, uh, I when I see it, I'll know it when I see it. Yeah. So anything else? No, man, I think I'm good. I think we, I think we covered it. We've been yeah. at it for about an hour and a half. Yeah. It's one 30. So yeah, we have Ooh. been. Awesome. Well, I'm going to try to re do this from memory mode. I'm not Jason. So if I mess it up, I'm sorry. Can you just go and like cut it out from the previous episode? And I was thinking of doing that. <laughs> just taking the tag and being like, thank you. And then, Why the hell's Jason here? And Jason would have been like, what am I doing there? I wasn't there. Jason's been here the whole time. We just didn't give him a microphone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's some of the best shows when he'll like call in in the middle of the show and he's like in the middle of doing something. And it's like, Hey man, what are you up to? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So let me see if I can do this from memory. Thank you for listening to the smugglers galaxy podcast. Please uh, give us a five-star review on any, uh, on your Spotify or iTunes or Apple play or, all that fun crap. Thank you for Levi Waterhouse for the music and Alfonso Riviera for the logo. Uh, let me see what else. Uh, vote with your wallet. Be a positive force in the collecting galaxy. Uh, Hasbro, please release VC66. Um, this is the way. This is the way. <laughs>